Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at the entry-level Microsoft Surface Go 2. So the Surface Go 2 was first announced on May 6, 2020, and after watching the announcement video that Microsoft posted that day, I became very interested in this new Surface Go. It seemed as if a lot of the things that I didn't like about my first generation Surface Go from 2018 had been addressed. So I went ahead and got like three of these. And once I got them in my hands, I was thrilled to find out that Microsoft had indeed addressed a lot of the things that I didn't like about the first generation Surface Go. They didn't address everything, but still, they addressed a lot. And this is huge. Not only is this a Surface Go that I think a lot of people will now actually want to buy, but I also think that this is a Surface Go that people will now actually enjoy using, which is very important. If we look back in retrospect, the entry-level first-generation Surface Go was a reasonably decent computer, but it wasn't for everyone, and it was hard to meticulously appreciate the Surface Go for what it was unless you got one strictly as a secondary computer. However, even with that condition satisfied, the experience arguably got less and less enjoyable for some people anyway, the more that they tried to perform activities that usually only prosumers and power users would perform. On top of that, it had a CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage combination that very clearly presented the limitations of the first generation Surface Go once you got out of Windows 10's S mode. So to recap, the user base was definitely there, but the first generation Surface Go was not able to meet expectations for certain tasks tasks that might have sounded like an extreme case of what someone might want to be doing on the Surface Go, but realistically, we're not. That brings us to the Surface Go 2. If you're a person who really likes mini computers, but you didn't like the Surface Go before, you won't want to sleep on this new one. The new Surface Go 2 is elegant, versatile, and most importantly, very enjoyable to use. Let's start with the display. Microsoft gave the Surface Go 2 a bigger 10.5 inch laminated display with a slightly higher screen resolution of 1920 by 1280 and a marginally higher pixel density of 220 pixels per inch. On paper, it might not seem like that much of an increase compared to what we had with the first generation Surface Go, but once you actually see these displays side by side in person, you'll definitely see the differences. And it's still one of the best displays that you can get for a Windows PC in the $4,600 price range. This display has exceptional viewing angles, reasonable color accuracy, and absolutely no light bleeding issues whatsoever, which is awesome. You can't say that about the displays on most cheap laptops. Unfortunately, this display is really hard to see outdoors, so if you're ever going to use this thing under direct sunlight for some reason, with the Windows 10 dark theme on the whole time, then prepare for a really uncomfortable viewing experience. Otherwise, I'll think you'll be fine. You're still getting a 3 to 2 aspect ratio display, which is wonderful for web browsing, using office applications, checking email, media consumption, doing homework, taking notes, drawing, and you know, a lot of other basic everyday tasks. Of course, with this display being so tall, you will experience some letterboxing when watching, for example, YouTube videos with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, or wider. But let's just get one thing straight. If you're one of those people who are still complaining about letterboxing in 2020, Something's wrong. You gotta stop with that junk because letterboxing is realistically not that big of a deal. If anything, you should be more concerned about pillar boxing, which is honestly way worse than letterboxing will ever be. Now, back in late 2018, when I made my full review of the entry level first generation Surface Go, I had a lot of beef with the bezels on that thing. It was just straight up ugly. Like, look at this thing. You have this beautiful Surface Go with a great display and a gorgeous magnesium alloy enclosure almost everywhere, but then all of a sudden you get these completely random garbage bezels in the front. That was literally the biggest tech meme of 2018 for me, and I really hope that whoever designed this thing learned their lesson. Thick sauce bezels on a tablet nowadays is just completely ridiculous. Microsoft better not pull this off again. But with the Surface Go 2, we get some very reasonably sized bezels as a result of that larger display. Keep in mind that the general footprint of this new Surface Go's body hasn't changed whatsoever. The Surface Go 2 is still 245mm wide, 175mm tall, and 8.3mm thick, just like its predecessor. So we get smaller bezels and a larger display, but not a larger device, which is great. All of this makes the Surface Go 2 so much more enjoyable to look at and so much more pleasing to handle. Plus, it's still very easy to hold the Surface Go 2 on either of its four sides with these thinner bezels, so this is definitely a win for everybody. No questions asked. So the Surface Go 2 is marketed as a tablet first and laptop second, but to get the most out of your Surface Go experience, you may want to consider purchasing a Surface Go type cover for your Surface Go 2 because this device is great as a laptop, but not so much as a standalone tablet, quite honestly. 
This black microfiber type cover that I have here is about $100 here in the US, but if you want to get one of those colored type covers with that nice Alcantara material, you'll have to pay like $30 more for those. To keep costs as low as possible, you may want to go with the black microfiber Surface Go type cover, since it's the cheapest one that Microsoft offers. Plus, if you're planning on getting the Surface Pen for taking notes or whatever, you could be using those $30 towards that Surface Pen instead of a colored keyboard. Now, this is all assuming that you're only considering first-party accessories. As always, Amazon also offers some third-party Surface Go keyboards for a lot less, so I'd give Amazon a quick look if you want to try and save a few bucks. Will those keyboards be as nice as Microsoft's Surface Go type covers? Probably not, but you know, if you gotta save money, you gotta save money. It's always nice to save a few bucks wherever you can. For the rest of this section, however, I'll be talking about the first party Surface Go type covers, since it's the recommended keyboard of choice for this computer. The key travel is very short, and the keys are smaller than your usual full-size laptop keyboard, so typing on the Surface Go type cover might feel a bit cramped at first, but you'll get used to it eventually. It isn't too bad. Although the keys are small, you're still getting a complete laptop key set here. It's also backlit, and you get physical function keys laid out across the top of the key set, so all the basics are checked off. The trackpad on the Surface Go type cover might look small, but this is actually a surprisingly reasonable size for a keyboard cover this small. Sure, it might be dipping into small trackpad territory, but you know, the Surface Go is also pretty small, so what can you do? Ultimately, it's really not terrible at all. I think we can forgive its size since tracking is good, performing gestures is extremely easy, and the texture of the trackpad surface is very smooth against your fingers. Honestly, this small trackpad makes a lot of other trackpads feel like trash, and I really mean that. This is a surprisingly good trackpad overall. My only other complaint, aside from it just being kind of small, is that you can only perform clicks on the bottom half of the trackpad, and not the upper half, so some people might not appreciate that. One thing I do want to bring up about the Surface Go 2 is that it addresses an engineering flaw that was present with the first generation Surface Go, involving the Surface Go type cover. So on the first generation Surface Go, the cutout for the Surface type cover port was asymmetrical. And that was annoying because whenever you wanted to flip the keyboard around like this, one of the sides of the Surface Go type covers connector would actually stick out, also making it prone to damage. It's ultimately not a huge deal. Some people might just call this nitpicking, but you know, the whole point of the type covers is to be able to bend them back, flip them, attach it backwards like this, and all that stuff. So when I found out that my first generation Surface Go didn't actually support this functionality properly, it just never really left my brain. It's been bugging me ever since I found out about it. So I'm really glad to see that the Surface type cover port on the Surface Go 2 was revised to correct the engineering flaw that its predecessor had. I can now attach the keyboard backwards on the Surface Go 2 properly, which is great. I'm glad that I'll never have to be bothered by that oversight again. Build quality is the same. You're getting that very premium magnesium alloy enclosure that Microsoft surfaces are so well known for having. The rounded corners are still here on the Surface Go 2, and I really like that. I love how those rounded corners feel in my hand. In terms of ports, there's also nothing new. You still get one 3.5mm audio I.O. port, one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port, and one Surface Connect port. They're all in the exact same places as they were with the first generation Surface Go. However, I really wish that Microsoft had scooted that Surface Connect port up a little bit because that port is kind of hard to plug into with the cable of the connector in question facing downward. Not to mention, this orientation is really bad for the cable itself. As you can see, the cable is just bending way too much. Also, there is still a micro SD card slot, which I am absolutely ecstatic to see. The Surface Pro X didn't have a micro SD card slot, and that was such a huge bummer for me because most of my storage got taken up by apps. So I'm really happy to see storage expansion options still here on the Surface Go. Stuff like this greatly boosts the overall value of these devices. But quick side note, the micro SD card interface on the Surface Go 2 only reads and writes up to UHS-1 speeds. Don't waste your money on UHS-2 micro SD cards for this machine because you won't be able to peak at UHS-2 speeds. Alright, so the entry-level configuration is equipped with an Intel Pentium Gold 4425Y. Some of the mid-tier configurations have them too. This is a 6-watt CPU with 2 cores, 4 threads, and a clock speed of 1.7GHz. Just for reference, the first generation Surface Go had the 4415Y, which also had two cores and four threads, but a clock speed of 1.6 GHz. Now for most people, simply looking at these numbers on paper might not mean anything to them. And I don't blame you, like there's only a difference in clock speed of 100 MHz here. 
So what? That's like nothing, right? Well, not exactly. We're talking about the Pentium Gold here. Although they're not exactly known for their performance, these chips do actually greatly benefit from higher clock speeds. As some of you may already know, the most mainstream Intel CPUs after a certain clock speed have negligible performance differences. It's usually up to the core count and other things to materialize a noteworthy performance increase. But with the Pentium Golds, that's not really the case. Higher clock speeds actually do introduce quite an increase in performance, even if the differences in clock speed when comparing different chips is just 100 MHz. CPU benchmarking software won't really reflect this as practically as a set of real world tasks that someone would have to physically perform, but I hope you'll take my word for it. This is an odd case where the performance on paper doesn't completely match up with the actual user experience. The Surface Go 2 just feels a lot snappier compared to the first generation Surface Go. Boot up times are faster, the handling of high impact startup programs is much better, and also performing any kind of heavy multitasking is now actually possible on the Surface Go 2. With my first generation Surface Go, boot up would take a while, startup programs would slow down the login sequence, and multitasking made Windows extremely sluggish. So although this processor upgrade might not sound like much on paper, it does offer some very noteworthy performance improvements in contrast to its predecessor. It's not like a cutting edge performance increase, there's definitely still a lot of room for improvement, but it's just enough of an increase so that performing basic tasks on the Surface Go 2 would be anything but tedious. It's a lot more enjoyable to work on the Surface Go 2 now. Okay, now if you're someone who just doesn't care about all these technical details and you simply want a processor that's okay and not absolute garbage, I think you can trust the 4425Y. For some people, it might be hovering really close to their idea of being quote unquote absolute garbage, and that's probably just inspired by the previous negative reputation that this family of processors carry, but the 4425Y really isn't garbage. You know, I thought the first generation Surface Go's 4415Y was okay-ish a couple years ago, but realistically, that processor doesn't hold a candle to the 4425Y in the entry-level Surface Go 2. You'll be able to do a lot more stuff with the 4425Y. Plus, the integrated graphics chip is quite a bit more performant than that of the one in the 4415Y. You're getting Intel UHD graphics instead of Intel HD graphics. Digital artists in particular will really appreciate this. There are times when the 4425Y's limitations do show though, sometimes when I'm using very CPU and GPU intensive applications, the Surface Go 2 does lag quite a bit, but realistically, people getting this computer will probably only be using it to do some very basic everyday tasks, and the 4425Y is more than enough for that. On the other hand, I do feel as though the Surface Go 2 will catch the eyes of a lot more tech-savvy individuals this year, so if you're in that tech-savvy demographic and you're interested in a Surface Go 2, you may actually want to consider the models sporting that Intel Core M3 8100Y. It's pretty pricey, but to be honest, I actually think that it's worth the money. If the higher tier configurations had the Pentium Gold 4425Y, kind of like how the quote-unquote higher tier first generation Surface Go's still had the 4415Y's, then obviously that would have been a no-go. But this is not the case this time. The M3's are surprisingly solid on the higher tier Surface Go 2's, so that Intel Core M3 alone very well justifies the price of those more expensive Surface Go 2's. Now there's something about Microsoft's processors of choice for the Surface Go 2 that I really feel the need to talk about. So the past couple of weeks, every time I've used my Surface Go 2, I always think that the Microsoft SQ1 would have really shined on this machine. That's the ARM processor that Microsoft put in the Surface Pro X, and I feel like it would have fit the Surface Go 2 much better because the Surface Go 2's intended user base wouldn't have suffered from the SQ1's app compatibility limitations as greatly as that of the Surface Pro X's user user base. Unlike the Surface Pro X, the Surface Go 2 is not a computer targeted towards the professional demographic of computer users. So I don't know, I can't really help but to think that Microsoft really missed their opportunity to use an ARM processor on a computer that would have actually made sense to put it on. Not to mention it would have made the Surface Go 2 a lot faster and much more energy efficient. And you know, speed and battery life is very important for a tablet. It's why so many people like iPads. They're very fast and they offer great battery life for the average consumer. Okay, so Microsoft's still doing that thing where the entry-level configuration has an EMMC drive and only select mid to high tier configurations have SSDs. I'm kind of annoyed that they're still doing this, but you know, since the processor is bringing us some performance improvements, I guess we can let it slide. Drive speeds for the entry-level configuration are as shown. Not exactly my definition of fast, that's for sure. 
There are thumb drives out there that are much faster than the EMMC drive in this thing, but at $399, well, there's gotta be some kind of sacrifice here, right? Battery life is okay. I'm getting an average of about 9 hours of battery life with heavy usage, and that's rounded down to the nearest hour. It's a slight upgrade from the first generation Surface Go, which has only given me about 6 hours of battery life with extremely light usage and only 3 hours with heavy usage since day 1, so I'm really happy to see that Microsoft thought about battery life in the Surface Go 2. And in case you're wondering what that heavy usage is, this primarily includes things like heavy web browsing with Microsoft Edge, drawing in Clip Studio Paint Pro, typing essays in Word, uploading and downloading dozens of gigabytes of files using OneDrive, and streaming music using Spotify. Notice that I said primarily at the beginning of my sentence, so deep down I'm doing a lot of other things in the background other than just drawing, typing up stuff and using OneDrive, but you know, they're just your typical background tasks. Okay, cameras are still great, nothing major has changed really. You still get a 5 megapixel front facing camera and an 8 megapixel rear facing one. Both can shoot 1080p video and the quality is very nice. I mean, surfaces have always had really good cameras. Um, obviously, you won't be taking like scenic photos with this thing, uh, but they can come in handy in an academic setting or some kind of managerial working environment. Also, given the times, these cameras would be fantastic for video calls. Uh, there is one noteworthy change that I'd like to mention. The Surface Go 2 now has dual far-field front-facing microphones now, that of which Microsoft calls studio mics, and they sound really nice. On the first-generation Surface Go, I don't have it with me right now, but on the first-generation Surface Go, uh, that device only had one microphone. Although I never really thought, gee, I wish that the microphone on my Surface Go was better. You know what I mean? So it really makes you wonder if that extra effort and money spent could have gone to using SSDs instead of EMMC drives. Alright, let's wrap things up. So Microsoft made a small handful of changes to the Surface Go that greatly improves the overall Surface Go experience. It's not perfect, but honestly, it's way better than what we had before. With the entry-level Surface Go 2 configuration, which I'd imagine most people buying since it's the cheapest, you get a ton of great hardware at this price that many other similarly priced Windows tablets and laptops just don't offer for some reason. It's a great little device to bring with you to a coffee shop or a park because of its size, but even more importantly, the hardware upgrades just make this device so much more enjoyable to work on compared to the entry-level first-generation Surface Go. Now, again, Microsoft didn't address everything that thwarted its predecessor, like we're still getting Pentium Gold processors on the lower tier configurations, as well as EMMC storage on the entry level configuration and 4GB of RAM, which I'm really not a fan of. But the more I use the Surface Go 2, the more I realize that this experience is seriously nothing like that of the one I had with the first generation Surface Go, which is crazy because on paper the differences seem negligible. I still think that the Surface Go 2 would be better off as most people's secondary computer, just so, you know, your expectations won't be so high, but I'm telling you, this is a much more enjoyable Surface Go to use now, if given to the right demographic, you know, middle school students, certain high school students, programmers, or even adults who don't need to do any kind of super demanding tasks, this could sufficiently be somebody's primary computer. That was something that you couldn't really say about the entry-level, first-generation Surface Go. So this is quite a step up for Microsoft. They finally made the Surface Go 2 a capable go-to computer. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys again in my next video.